I was saying, Joy Taylor, every dog has its day. And since I'm a big dog, I've got two days. Okay. So now. You just called yourself a dog? Yeah, I'm a dog. Yeah, I'm a big dog. A big one. Kevin Durant is 6'11", who can pull up from 40. Okay. This brother is on that level. I'm talking about offensively. Do you, do you think you're now. better than Darrell Revis is right now? I'm better than you. And we're live in the phone lines, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the Lowdown Podcast. I have a big, huge guest on this show today. So if you're looking for a top-end sprint coach or anybody that get, that's good with endurance training, sprint training, block starts, if you're a track runner, this is the best trainer I've seen. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to say the same thing about that. His name is Will Collins. He's the creator of of Fast University. He goes by Fast University on Instagram and Twitter, has over 50,000 followers. He is a professional speed and biomechanics specialist, a world-class sprint coach. I just wanted to say, Coach Will, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you guys for having me, man. It's been such a great opportunity and a great blessing to be here. Oh, it's a blessing to have you on here, man. I just, uh, for example, like starting starting it off, man. Like for the first question, I just wanted to say, how does it feel knowing that you've gained this much traction and basically helped out a tremendous amount of athletes over the past several years. I think it's just a really good, you know, um, feeling to see athletes all over the United States and the world just learn how to become faster. I remember me myself when I was growing up, I was uh, watching like great coaches like John Smith and different individuals, uh, Olympic coaches, you know, train like Carl Lewis, different people. And it really inspired me and it showed me the discipline that was necessary as well as the character that was needed to become a great champion. Oh, most definitely. And then I just wanted to ask you, like, so you – because this is the crazy part. See, you probably don't remember this, but I remember being in middle school. I was either in the seventh or eighth grade. I Actually, it was in the eighth grade. No, actually, no, seventh grade, as a matter of fact. So you trained people like it was me, Alonzo Crawford, Thomas Dillon, you came to Beckendorf Junior High one day. And yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I remember yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so I saw you back then, and then I remember you, you had it labeled as prototype uh, in, in the late late 2000s, early 2010s. Was it called prototype before you called it Fast University? Yeah, so what I had was a track club that was called prototype, and, I mean, I think God has a great way of working in, in your life. So I, I didn't really want to, like, call it that, but, it, you know, it was like a name that popped up in my mind, and, like, it was in my spirit. So I was like, let me go with prototype. And then legitimately prototype was I, I look at it as the prototype to fast university. So whenever you have the Model T Ford and you have the vehicle, the car, right? Uh-huh. First vehicle that was ever made, that vehicle was made off of a prototype. So the car that we use now is based off of something that was started, you know, before prior. So I think it's like the Trailblazer or the first initial model, right? So, like, that's why I looked at it as my, my track club was the first initial model of what Fast University could look like. Wow, that's a good explanation right there because, like, I mean, I looked through, I did some research, man. You've been training just some superb athletes over the years. Like, for example, like, I saw that you trained Jacob Norman, who was a 60-meter national champion as a freshman. He ran a 6'5", a 6'5'6", six, as a matter of fact. I saw that, and you trained people. So you trained people like Hezekiah Jones, Tiffany Townsend. I mean, the list goes on. And then most recently, this past year, you trained – Lance Broom, who currently holds the record at Seven Lakes High School now in the 100 and the 200-meter dash, and you, he's at Texas A&M right now, and I know, I know that you're still training that guy. You're training people like Ryan Martin, who's also a top-tier sprinter that's also at that school. And then did you also train Matthew Bowling for a certain amount of time before he went to college? Or uh, Well, Matthew ran on our relay with Lance and Ryan. I'm the Team USA coach for the uh, Great Southwest, which is held every year in uh, New Mexico, University of New Mexico. So like uh, he was on a team USA team and they ran I think I believe they broke a US soil record or something they ran uh what was it forty nine one or forty eight nine something like that they ran really well but uh, no I haven't coached him his coach is a really good coach though his name is Coach TJ yeah because I mean just seeing all these athletes you've been coaching man I, it's something it's something you're doing something right because I've noticed like for example I saw that I looked at Ryan Martin's history. He was running the low. He was running into the low 11s. Like it was like 11. It was like a mid 11s, like 11 4 or 11 3 when he was a freshman. Yeah. Like he goes from that and runs a whole second faster. Runs a 10 3, high 10 2, low 10 3 as he comes out yeah. as a senior. So I mean, so what is like the basics? So how do you how do you help these athletes improve, man? How do you, how do you help them get their speed up and get their times down? Because I noticed that you always most track coaches say that your 400 time brings down your 200 and 100 meter time, but I noticed more to it. So what are other mechanics do you teach these guys, uh, enabling them to run the fastest times they've ever ran in their lives? 
I think the big thing is what separates what we do and what other people do is just that uh, it's not like we're doing something different. It's just more or less that we spend a lot of time on being meticulous and being very, very specific. So everything that we do has a reasoning behind it. So when we go into like the way that we lift, the way we live, the way we run, everything that we do is based off of a certain model of a type of sprinting. So our athletes are taught a certain choreograph or a certain style of running uh, from the very beginning to the very end. And if you really recognize, like, think about it, like all the places like China or like, you know, Jamaica or places like that, they have places, they have like different structures or like structuralized organization to where these kids are developed over time. So like they'll have a school to where these kids will learn track, learn the fundamental of the sprinting. Then they'll come into the next school and they'll learn the, how to integrate the fundamental of sprinting with the, you know, with the progressive look of sprinting. You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So it's like your, kid, your, kid, your kids are being constantly developed. And that's why I developed Fast University. Fast University is basically the opportunity for your kid to learn in an environment to where it has almost a university style um, breakdown or a um, periodization you know, slash like, you know, a lesson plan. Exactly. And then just going off of that, see, I noticed that track season is officially started, or outdoor season is mm-hmm. officially started for the high school. Mm-hmm. And I noticed you've been mm-hmm. videos about that on Instagram and Twitter. So uh, going off of that, so where do you plan, so what do you plan on putting these top athletes that you're, you're coaching as of now? Do you plan on getting them? So when it comes to improvement, do you have goals set for them at the beginning of the season or before, like during the off season, do you have goals set for them that they're going to achieve throughout the season and, and especially like through outdoor and especially whenever it starts to get warm up during the spring or how's that all go? Yeah. So for us, it's really about, uh, we set a goal in the beginning. So like I have a freshman, she's the fastest freshman in the country. She runs, uh, she opened up with a 12, three, she should go to about 11, seven, a hundred and a 200. She ran 26 open, she should go about 24, we're thinking. And a quarter, she ran 61. She should go about 58. So these are all like national records or – I'm sorry, not national – regional records for her, for the area as well as close to like some of the fastest times ever, right? So what we're trying to focus on for every athlete, no matter how good or you know how bad you are, it doesn't matter. We just want to be progressive throughout the summer, throughout the week. And every week you want to work on a certain portion of the race. And that's how we work at, you know, our, our progression. So we teach our athletes from, let's just say if there was like four pieces in the race, A, B, C, and D. This last month, last two months, I was teaching from A to B. And now these next two months, I'm teaching from B to C. And then for the next two months, I'll be teaching from C to D. So that's kind of like how the lesson plan goes. That's a really good. That's a really good way to, to plan it out because uh, you, you're basically taking it one step at a time, and it sure it sure shows. Because these guys, I've noticed like over the years, every athlete you've trained, they progress. Like every single one of them progress. Like their times improve and improve and improve until you know they say they make it all the way to regionals or even state, and it really improves. Like for example, like I saw Lance Broom improve throughout the season last year, and then he went down to running a ten four zero in fifty five degree weather in state, and got a second or third place. I remember it was like it was Matthew Bowen with a ten one three. And it was actually he he did get third because it was close between Lance Broom and this guy from Plano who's now playing mm-hmm. football at Texas right now. So it's like mm-hmm. yeah, it was really close between them two. But just to see how I noticed Broom and that guy from from Plano and Boeing they separated themselves from the rest of the pack. And I noticed that you see that shows proof right there that you've done an excellent job in training these guys and with their finish. Because I noticed that you always block starts are extremely important for the hundred. And I noticed that that finish your start. And your finish, like it's extremely important because you, you have to have a tough finish in order to win the race. Because, like, well, we're we're trained 100, 200, 400. So, a lot of athletes and a lot of coaches. So, we're big on developing athletes for colleges. So, Lance and Ryan are at uh, at Texas A&M, as well as uh, Moyo's at University of Texas. Um, and our, our all of our athletes recently are like signed to like major colleges. So, those major colleges, you know, are banked on whenever you become an athlete and this is a very good information for athletes that are going to be listening to your show you know if you're if you're an athlete in high school and you want to be valuable to any college you want to be a versatile not say a versatile athlete but an athlete that can produce in multiple events meaning that if you run the 100 you want to be good in the 200 and the 400 not saying you want to be you have to be it's not a want for you to be proficient in the one you have to be proficient in two and the four 
Um, if you look at the fastest 100 meter runners, I can give you their 400 meter PRs and their world ranking times. So you have to be very, very um, equal across the board. So it's just like uh, if you're a receiver, right? You can run, you can be fast, but run bad routes. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that that's kind of the same situation. If you're a sprinter, if you can, you know, if you have good turnover, you can run a good 60, but you can't actually, you know, run a 400. That means you're limited in how fast you can actually run. That means you can't run nine. A 9.9 runner, no matter how big or how small he is, can actually run the 400 as well. That makes plenty of sense right there. And then speaking of the 400, so what kind of workouts do you guys, you know, conduct every single day on a daily basis basis for guys that run the 400? Because I know the 400 is like a, it's like a more of a mental thing. It seems more of a mental thing than anything else running the 400. So, well, it's more of a physiological and an energy system thing. So it's an energy system. So whenever you talk about athletes in a 400, 400 is kind of like the, uh, the equalizer of the field. And I want to be very, very plain when I speak about this. You know, I'm, I'm a mixed athlete. I'm half Korean. I'm half black, you know. So when I say when I say it's an equalizer, I mean a genetic equalizer. So I mean like genetic markers. I'm talking about, you know, your natural inclination to have fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch muscle fibers. So, you know, usually they think that, you know, Asians and, you know, you know, uh, Caucasian athletes don't have the ability to be able to, you know, I guess, dominate the sprints as well as African-American athletes, right? Yep. It's common. So, like, now, when you look at it now, Japan has debunked this as well as a lot of other nations who have a very good 400, 200, 100 minute uh, athletes. And really, the 400 was the first thing to ever break down, if you think about it. There were a lot of a lot of top, you know, like Jeremy Werner. He's a Caucasian athlete who uh, ran the 400 uh, as well as... Um, you know, there's a lot of Caucasian athletes that ran the 400 or oh, 400 hurdles. The fastest 400 hurdler in the world is white, you know? So the thing about it is, it's not a white or a black thing. It's more or less, it's like, it's more about like energy systems. So certain genetics are built to handle certain energy systems in certain ways. So when you know your genetic situation, you're able to like identify that. So it gets real scientific after a while. And that's what I like about track and field now is that it's gotten to, to the point where we're pushing the number so much that we have to dig into genetics. Man, that's very well said right there. And then another question I wanted to ask about that is because I noticed that when you talk about the genetics and then the scientific terms in order to help these athletes improve, I noticed you also uh, train these athletes not only on the track but also in the weight room. I noticed that I'll see videos of them working out and lifting weights. So, so how do you guys, like, on the typical day, do you have them going to the gym on their off days from running or do you have them running on the same day as lifting? So we lift and run every single day. So we run Monday through Thursday and we lift Monday through Thursday. And uh, what we do is, when I say lift, it doesn't mean necessarily we're just lifting like, like you know, beast every day. But we go into the weight room and we do like functional strength training. We do different things in different times of the year. So depending on what time of the year, like right now, we're really built on uh, power and developing uh, power development. So we're doing a lot of Olympic lifts. Uh, we're working on, you know, uh, power cleans, overhead snatch, split jerks, things of that nature to where we can combine the power that we developed early in the season and start to use, I mean, develop this, the strength that we use early in the season and start to develop into power. Because power really is only the strength times the speed. So you have to add speed to the bar to be able to create power. So people say, I want a more powerful athlete. Well, you have to create strength first. So we've been building strength for the last two or three months, and now we're adding speed to that. So now we're creating things that we can use on the track. So these are very good components that have to be put in place right now. So it comes also with sacrifice. So whenever you start adding components of power, you have to also add in components of stability. So then, you know, your backs are going to start getting tighter, or, you know, hamstrings are going to tight. You know, things are going to happen, so you have to, like, start adjusting. So this is where good coaching comes in the experience. So as you become more experienced, you become more effective in knowing how to monitor and how to prevent and how to reduce injuries. And what are the what are the best ways to prevent injury when when uh, lifting weights and then running? So what are great? Because I noticed like for athletes, especially in track, uh, hamstring injuries and Achilles injuries are very common. So how do you guys uh, make sure you prevent those uh, risks of it being injured in those uh, categories? Well, primarily what we focus on number one is nutrition. If you don't eat well, you can't repair well. So even if you didn't do something wrong, and if you did something everything right, and you didn't repair repair well, 
if you go out and do some more work and you overexert yourself, you'll 